Okay, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. What a great day to have a mastermind. Um, let's see who's all on here. Uh, fantastic. Our ISA family. All right. Some of you are unmuted and have a little bit of typing noise going on, so I'll just let you be aware of that. That's me. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Let's see. I think I have. Yeah, there it is. So last week we, you know, well, not just last week, but I pulled this into the Empower to Have It All kind of template here, this template. <clears throat> and yesterday I did a Facebook Live as I was just going through my, well, John, it really came from that conversation that we had, you know, you and me and a couple other people had showed up for the business training. We didn't really promote that very well that we were doing that on Saturday morning or when it was Sunday morning. Um, but we had a good discussion and about the unlimited songs that could be made. I mean, there's like an infinite amount of songs that can be made from what seems like a limited vocabulary, you know, just within the English vocabulary. Look at how many different songs have been made. And we had that discussion and, you know, your musician, I guess I call myself a musician, but I'm not really a musician, but I love playing the drums and picking up the guitar now. And, uh, but uh, just, it, it's always bewildered. Is that a word, good word to use? Bewildered me? The, the songs, I've like, I've thought about that even before Isogenics and being on a, you know, the journey that I've been on. I've always just have been impressed or something by how many songs can just keep being made and the arrangements and uh, what Witzel would call the complexities, the differences in those songs. I mean, and not just like thinking of your genre and the one that you like, think about rap and country and disco and grunge and rock and roll and and uh, you know, uh, opera, all of the different songs. Well, I guess that gets out of the English language, doesn't it? Opera, but look at all of the different songs that are still being made, not just a around what we like to listen to, top 40, whatever the case might be. And out of all of the genres, they're still different with the same English language. It just has always really impressed me that. That creativity, I guess it's the creativity and that imagination because that's really what somebody's tapping into. I think it's Wallace Waddles or Charles Hannell or one of those philosophers that said um, the artist is the most closely related to taking the principles of creation. Like they'll take something that's in their head that they completely imagined for the first time ever and create it and put it on a canvas. The artist so closely, uh, how does he use the word, resembles, you know, what he's talking about here. Uh, and it might be Charles Hannell or Wallace Waddles, you may come across it, um, that, that that's what the artist does. And I remember Bob Proctor quoting somebody can't remember which painter it was, but he says, I, I, something about seeing it in his head and then puts it on the canvas, you know, and, and in a sense, that's what songwriters do. Musicians do that. And in a, even, and, and it's a more obvious sense, like it's more taking that fantasy, turning it into a theory and then into a fact in the recording studio. So the way the, that Bob frames it up, Bob Proctor in that little three minute video is the fantasies in your head, but it's kind of abstract. 
you ever have something in your head and you try to get it across to somebody, but it doesn't translate as clearly as it is in your head to when you try to explain it to somebody. And, and so we've got to get that fantasy and turn it into a very clear theory. And that's what a songwriter does. They, they take these words and they write them down on a piece of paper. And I've seen notes from songwriters where they cross things out or they might have something scribbled out and they change things around. Um, and then they get it to where they like it and they fall in love with it and like, yes, that's it. And then they get the musicians together and then they collaborate and then the recording studio records it. And now it's turned into a fact. So a fantasy into a theory, into a fact. So the theory is the process of this right here, like we're looking at on the template. You're taking an abstract idea. I'm an isogenics associate. I'm a human being. I have a family, I have desires, I have needs, I have wants. And uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm being uh, educated here to, to understand and believe that I can have those wants. Like anything is possible. And so I've got to write that out into a theory. I don't know how many of you have actually done this on your own and keep theorizing and getting it clearer and falling more and more in love with it. And unlike me as an artist, like a, 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 a paint, I like to paint, but I don't like to pull the paints out and then put them away and then pull them out and put them away. And so I might paint once a year, you know, and then put the paints back and I didn't finish the, the painting that I started, you know, because I didn't take the time, energy, and effort to set up shop every day. And uh, even when I had an art room, I still didn't go in there every day. It just didn't move me enough. It didn't motivate me enough to go in there and just work on drawing and painting every single day consistently. The people who have are like, you know, the Kincaids and uh, Thomas Kincaid and, and, and other artists that just keeps turning out masterpiece after masterpiece, you know, painting after painting after painting. Um, I don't know how many people do that with your template here, but that's really what it takes is to do it every day and to fall in love with it. Did you do it this morning? Did you fall in love with your vision this morning? Did you connect with it? Did you experience it? And, and it doesn't just say non-negotiable there because that's something that I came up with, the non-negotiables, you know, compelling vision every morning. It's because it's what has to be done. It's part of the principle of taking the theory and turning it into a fact, not the fantasy. Now, if you have it down on paper and it's clear and it's, it has the specifics all the way through, then you now need to turn that theory into a fact through that non-negotiable things that you need to do, giving it constant attention, nurturing it. Can't remember who says it, but like a baby, you know, just being with that baby and not leaving it alone and nurturing it. So, okay. So going back to the complexities, I wrote on uh, one of my three by five cards that um, I'll pull it up here on my phone because I don't know that I'm ready to share that one publicly. But I'll share the last line. <clears throat> and the last line is, oops. So this was the line that was there already. Scoop as much as I possibly can from the infinite and there's still an infinite amount left. So that was from Raymond Hollywell's, like I mentioned in the Facebook Live from the online course. I've only ever taken one online course. I've been to a lot of seminars and I've only taken one online course. And that was with Bob Proctor and Mary Morrissey. So scoop as much as I possibly can from the infinite and there's still an infinite amount left. But I took out left and I put there's still an infinite amount of any combination and complexity. So scoop as much as I possibly can from the infinite and there's still an infinite amount of any combinations and complexities left. 
that's how I put it. So see how I took the left and put it to the end of those, what I inserted there? There is still an infinite amount of any combinations. Why did I put that? Because I feel like people probably feel really restricted with their, their um, template. Or even people who haven't done a template, they absolutely, how many people do you think out there feel restricted and confined and feel like they're put in a jail cell right now because of the current events of social distancing? How many people have allowed themselves to let the event take away that ability to create any combination and any complexity? I've been able to complete, or I've been able to create my uh, combinations and complexities within the confines of my own office. I didn't have to go out and be anywhere to create those. And I didn't know how they were gonna be accomplished. So the confines aren't any different to me. And I, I didn't say that in the Facebook Live, but when I say it's business as usual for me, I don't feel any more confined than I did before. Does that make sense? I don't feel any more confinement than I did before because I know I can go anywhere like I always have right here in the confines of my own four walls of my office right here. And I've been on some pretty good trips right here in my mm -hmm. office. And I don't have to worry about how it's going to be accomplished. So with the combinations and complexities that you could come up with with your imagination, which is the most powerful, uh, I think it's the most powerful of the six mental faculties is your imagination. And, and Einstein would probably agree. He says it's not limited by knowledge. Imagination is more powerful than knowledge because it's not limited. So when we learn something, we, it opens us up. We realize how much we don't know because we know we could learn more above and beyond what we just learned. It opens up more to be learned. So when we, you know, again, the imagination, when we can tap into that, you can go anywhere. You know, we, we built a little, I put a brand new um, toy set in the back, a little playground. The other one was getting worn out. It was a wooden one. The sun got to it, it got weathered, you know, and. and I was gonna reseal it and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go buy a new one. And, and we built, it took me several, about a week to build it. And the kids were playing on it. And one of the kids yelled, let's fly to Mars while they were on the toy set. Let's go to Mars. And then yesterday they, they said, today it's a pirate ship. So the toy set out there with all of its climbing and swings and slides and tunnels to go through, it's a, it's a pirate ship today. A couple of days ago, it was a spaceship to go to Mars, right? Now we have reasoning, we have intuition. So those help keep us grounded in a sense. Like it's either again, you know, I, don't, I can't keep track of what I learn and who I learn it from, but um, you have to go along the lines of nature, right? That doesn't limit you, but you do have to be grounded in what your expectations are in what you can create. You know, there are limitations that we have as finite human beings in a physical world. Uh, you know, and I would say even with gravity, that, that's a sense of grounding, but look at how we've defied gravity. So you know, flying contraptions now, which they didn't have before. I, could you imagine back, you know, in the, you know, 200 AD or 500, you know, BC, you know, what they would think about a, a, an airplane flying through the sky right now, you know? So we, we have to find some laws of nature. And as you're creating things, you have to, be reasonable in a sense, like, like reasonable in a sense that it is literally possible through miraculous, you know, divine inspiration. Like, I don't believe I'm gonna grow wings and be able to fly myself without, you know, some kind of mechanical device to be able to fly. Could I grow wings? Well, 
I'm not going to spend the time to try and create a fantasy and turn it into a theory about how I could grow wings. Could it be possible? I don't know. I know that there's an insect that doesn't have wings. And when it has uh, run its course of food on a plant, it will grow wings and can fly to another plant or to the window. There is a, literally an insect that can grow wings that doesn't have wings, but it's genetically dispositioned to be able to do that, I guess, right? Or does it attract the wings? I don't really know. I'm not gonna ask on that. I'm not gonna go to that. <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna ask why, like Jim Rohn says, don't ask why on some things, all right? So why does the sun come up, you know, every morning? I wouldn't take that class. Well, eventually someday I'm gonna take that class as to how does the sun come up? How does that work? How does gravity work? How does the planets stay in alignment? Someday I'm gonna to wanna to take that class, probably not as a mortal human being, but in the infinite scheme of things, yeah, someday I'm gonna to wanna to know why the sun comes up and how it does, and I'm gonna learn that. But right now, it's not part of my experience that I'm really just, does that make sense, you guys? Am I making sense? Because I truly believe anything's possible, but we've gotta follow the, the lines of nature right now. So in a sense, you know, <clears throat> did John Anderson follow the lines of nature? Yeah, and formulating. Was he able to create something that nobody else was able to create? Yeah. When it came to the shake and the nutrition with the cleanse, he said he had never seen that formulation before. He wanted to create the healthiest people on the planet. And through a collaboration that he had with Jim Coover asking the question, Jim didn't ask that question. The divine asked that question through Jim Coover. Is there a way to cleanse the entire body on a cellular level? Boom, John goes into a trance. It locked him in to thinking about it. And was his desire to create that, I mean, to cleanse every cell of the human body? Well, he didn't know that that's how it was gonna show up. But yes, he wanted to create the healthiest people on the planet. He wanted to give his ability and add value to people through creating things that nobody else has ever created. And so he created the first and only full body nutritional cellular cleanse. And it came through a question that Jim Coover asked. That's the universe wanting to create progress. Two people came together and the how manifested itself. So as we, as we create our combinations and our complexities, don't feel limited. And, and, and when, I, when I bring that up, you could go too far one way and say, okay, well, I need to limit myself and what I'm really asking. No, that's not what I'm saying either. I'm just saying go for it. And, and it's got to be something that you can believe. And, and, you know, through the established channels, is there established channels of formulating the cleanse? Yeah, there was already established channels out there for John to be able to do that. The machinery was there. The distribution was there. The, the, uh, being able to buy the ingredients was there. All of that was already in place. Now, if it's not, Charles Hanna would say it would come out of the ether. It would manifest itself and make it possible. I believe that. Something that didn't have any lines already established, it would be made, a way would be made to do it. And we've seen that with some of the things that have been created. So kind of a, I don't know that it's a confusing conversation. It's just something to, to be able to, to think about as you're, as you're falling in love and creating a fantasy. Now we do have established lines around compensation, products, impact in people's lives and receiving, giving and receiving. We do have an established line around here, around giving and receiving. So how much are you willing to give that's a good question to ask. How much are you willing to give? And along with that, some people have a very difficult time with how much am I willing to receive? How much am I willing to give? Maybe write that right across the top of your, of your template. How much am I willing to give and how much am I willing to receive? 
IB48 is a bit perceived. How much am I willing to give? How much am I? That's really what the template is challenging you with here. And that's, you know, once you learn the principles, what else is in the way? You. And you might not be in the way. You might take this and just run with it. I'm watching some people run with this. Now I'm also watching some people get distracted. All distractions are equal when it comes to creating. You have to give it the attention, the focus, and the feeling that it demands. That it demands. You know, and, and maybe thinking about flying, you know, and, and having wings to fly. There's a few songs with that, right? Those that wording in it. The wings to fly. Uh, Bob... Proctor in, in, or maybe it's Earl Nightingale. No, Bob Proctor quotes it. I, I can't remember if, who he's quoting, Earl Nightingale, I think, that a dis, a, a, our number one achievement is to be able to control our thoughts and feelings. And he says, a successful person is somebody who has so developed the faculties of their mind, they can have anything they desire They can have anything they desire or it's equal without violating the rights of others. They can have anything they desire. And I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing that part or it's equal. I can't remember exactly how I said anything they desire or, or, or something that's equal to it. So um, maybe the Wright brothers, maybe somebody at some point visualized themselves. Maybe it was Leonardo da Vinci picturing himself flying through the air without any contraption. And then all of a sudden the ideas start to come and he drew up some blueprints of winged contraptions, right? And then the Wright brothers perfected it. So it's being able to have whatever you desire or it's equal without violating the rights of others. Some people have violated the rights of others by taking things away from people or writing on the backs of others. So what do you have to be willing to give? That's why that's in here. That's why we have the customer box and the business partner box because we want to create leverage and you're not going to create leverage that's going to grow and expand just through customers. Do you see why those two boxes are in there? It has to satisfy the principle. We're satisfying the principle of leverage with the, and, and expansion, self-perpetuation, a growing income through the business partners. But we're not taking advantage of them we're giving them value as well. And are you writing in that value for the business partners or you are, are you incomplete there and you're writing on their backs and creating sweatshops, making them work hard without receiving anything? <laughs> you have to write it into the blueprint. Are you writing the value in because you wanna satisfy that and those people who wanna be able to experience those things? And we also have a large customer base. We want to have a residual income. We want to maintain that wealth through satisfied customers. Maybe they don't want to be business partners. Maybe they don't want that kind of freedom. It's a complexity. There's different strokes for different folks. And you're going to have people who want the health, but they don't want the wealth. Why would you limit yourself? Why not just have two boxes? so that those who want the better health so that they can go out and work for their boss and trade time for money because that's where they're at. You see how if you wanted everybody to do the business, you're gonna limit your customer base. If you're not putting added value in a very specific way that's awesome for a customer who doesn't wanna do the business, then you're limiting yourself who you're gonna attract. There are going to be people who absolutely are passionate about these products. I talked to Cindy yesterday. She has people on her team that absolutely do not want to do the business, but love the products. So do I. So are you limiting yourself in your blueprint by trying to make every customer a business partner because you think that's what they want? Not everybody wants the business. So don't force your customers to want to do the business. Be okay with them. 
loving the products, right? All right, so I think that's a great question to write at the top. How much am I willing to give and how much am I willing to receive? And in the giving, you know, you have the different principles we need to satisfy. We're really satisfying. This would be passive, residual, consistent wealth. And over here would be leverage, expanding, abundance, and uh, self-perpetuating. Perpetuating, expanding wealth. Great wealth. This would be great wealth. Okay, now have you framed those up? Because that's just an abstract, this is what it is. Now how does that show up for you? What's your identity and relationship to these things? The principles demand that you get it detailed. You wouldn't send a letter to somebody with just the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and expect them to be able to interpret what, what you're trying to say. You gave them all the letters of the alphabet, but they're not gonna be able to interpret what you said. You have to arrange those letters very, very specifically. Now, there is room for a little bit of error. You could misspell some words and they still know what you mean, but that's the refining process as well, okay? So down here, how much are you willing to receive monetarily and recognition and appreciation from others? How much are, am I willing to receive in money, recognition, and appreciation from others? If you're not, the reason you wouldn't be okay with that is because you don't see yourself there. The identity, remember, well, let's do that in red. If you've watched the, the Zoom or if we've done one together, you know I talk about the identity. The identity has to come first in order to get from A to B. So the only reason you wouldn't be okay with receiving a lot when it comes to recognition, appreciation, and accolades. Let's put accolades on there. That's a good connotation, Acc accolades. How do you spell that? How much accolades are you willing to receive? How much are you receiving in your vision? Are you getting that award from Kathy Coover on the stage in front of thousands and thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people? And then, and then giving your speech because you just won man of the year or woman of the year because of your contribution to isogenics? How much am I willing to give? How much am I willing to receive? If you're not willing to receive that, then this falls apart. You negate this great wealth, self-perpetuating, the incredible contribution and the expanding customer base. You're negating that with what you're not willing to receive. I've heard some of your guys' uh, templates. You don't write it in there. You don't not write it in there on purpose. You're doing it subconsciously because you're not willing to receive that which I was willing to give. Isn't that what Christ said? Because you were unwilling to receive that which I was willing to give. Therefore, I can't remember that. It's vaguely in my head. You were not willing to receive that which I was willing to give. It might be from a church leader that I've heard that and not in scripture. But anything that comes of truth, whether it's from John Myers or from Angela or Teresa or from me, anything that is true is, is how can I say that? Kind of prophetic, prophetic. Any truth that you relate to somebody, any truth is, uh, is a revelation. You, when you get that intimation and you know it's true, and you speak that truth as it came to you and you understand it now with perfect perfection in its truth, you are now speaking revelation and prophets are, you know, revealing. Now, some prophets, their jobs are to warn people, but we can all tap into truth and, and speak by that spirit. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the book. 
Does that make sense, you guys? Anybody have any comments or anything they want to say on that? Is that a little more internalization process where you're like able to see something a little bit more internally that there's a responsibility that you have and, and knowing that now helps a little bit? Anybody? I thought I heard somebody about to say something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Willie talked about lottery mentality. And um, the way I see lottery mentality is um, I'm asking people to please do the activity that will make me rich because I'm not willing to do that activity myself. Is Malcolm breaking up for you guys? Did, did you guys lose Malcolm or was that just me? I heard him fine. I heard okay, some of it. I think my internet. It's my okay. internet must be a little slow. Malcolm's frozen up on me right now. Yeah, I, yeah Dave, I, I said, uh, uh, Willie talks about lottery mentality and, um, and uh, the way I see lottery mentality is uh, expecting people to do the activity I'm unwilling to do in order to make me rich, you know? And, and yeah. uh, this is a lead by example. Yeah. And when Emily Vavra, yeah, you know, on, uh, on Saturday, when she talked about uh, 10 new contacts, in one hour every day i remember i remember thinking you know i can do that i know how to do that right i'm not you know i i think a good day is you know three to five right but emily sang 10 right and i'm thinking ah you know in this in this season of corona where everybody's home it's time to notch it up guys it's time to contact people. They're home. You can you can reach them. They're not at they're not they're not getting their hair done. They're not they're not at the bar. They're not at the gym. They're home. Yeah. See the way Angela's grinning. She's calling people. And now is the time to pull all the stops out. Now is the time. You know. And and uh, 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 Wallace Waddles talked about. Uh, um, you know, multimillionaires are like monster rep reptiles of prehistoric eras. You know, they play a necessary role. She talked about, he talked about plutocrats, you know, uh, uh, hedge fund guys, you know, that uh, control things and buy companies and, and lay off people and, you know, and don't, and don't really contribute. They're competitors, right? They're not creating anything. They're not creative people, you know? And uh, when we get on the phone, we're creating, we're creating a possibility with another person about their health that they never knew existed. They had no idea you could build your immune system. They had no clue you can lower your risk of, of you know, I, I'm not saying um, it's going to prevent you from, from catching corona. You know, I'm, I mean, it's highly contagious stuff, right? So, uh, but the way that your body deals with it, a lot of, all of these, all of these people that, and everybody knows 500 people. So there's 500 people that you know, you know, whether you admit it or not, and, and uh, uh, they don't know they can build their immune system. And you're, and you're the creator, you're creating that possibility in their mind and creating a completely new health outcome for them, okay? Willie, um, when he was calling Guillermo, and Guillermo was not happy to hear from Willie, you know? Guillermo was feeling a little bit ashamed about his weight and, and how that was a chain of failures, and, and uh, so he wasn't that happy to hear from Willie, but Willie persisted, right? Because he was creating a new reality for Guillermo, a reality that involved releasing a hundred pounds. Okay. And, 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 and he, he was able to create that in his mind. And after a while, because of his intention, okay, Guillermo started to get it. Guillermo started to go along he, be, because, because Willie had the intention 
and um, and uh, uh, Delvey had the intention, and Frank had the intention, and John had the intention, and Malcolm had the intention, and Cindy had the intention, and Kathy had the intention, and Dave had the intention. All all of that intention caught Guillermo. Okay, it was transmitted through the universe to Guillermo. All right. Yeah, you can do that this morning. 10 calls. I'm doing it, man. <laughs> That's a lot Thanks, of Dave. turns that people didn't see ahead of them. But we did. We knew that that was going to show up. Some of us knew that that was going to show up, even yeah. though we couldn't see all of those turns to get to Guillermo. Yeah. We just know. Are, were are any one of us surprised that Guillermo has showed up? Malcolm, no. are you caught off guard and totally no. surprised that that happened? Willie created that. You could tell if if, if you go back and listen uh, to to that uh, that call in the back of the um, of the uh, foreverpack.com, it's the longest call that we had. Okay, it's like an hour and fifty minutes. It's it's a long one, right? At the end of that, Willie is talking. And you can tell it's gonna happen. You can hear it in his voice. You can hear the intention coming through the Zoom at you, okay? Wow. You can hear it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I, I recommend you listen to it. If you wanna know where Guillermo came from, listen to that long, long, uh, 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 I've forgotten what it was called. <laughs> That's the complete I, overview, the template, the complete right. overview. Yeah, yeah, the complete overview of the town. Okay, that all right. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, and you know, it's like none of us were caught off guard. It's like Laura St. John says, of course Guillermo showed up. Of course so-and-so showed up. There's a knowing that we have. And, and I want to go back to what Malcolm said here um, earlier that I think is just worth, again, you know, uh, the lottery mentality expecting others to do what I'm not willing to do. And some of you, some of, uh, I'm not gonna say some of you, some people will write a template and then why does it go in the drawer? Why does like my painting canvases, why is it not revisited? Because they want other people to do what they just wrote out. They want this to happen. It's more like a wish to them. It's more like a lottery to them. Okay, I've explained what I want, but I'm not willing to do the work. That's what I want. There it is. That's what that's totally what I want, but I'm not willing to do the work. And and another thing that you had brought up, it is essential to give in order to receive. Right? Somebody put in the comments. That's where I saw that. Somebody wrote in the comments, um, yeah, we're taught it's better to give than to receive, right? I've heard that before. How many of you have heard that statement before? It's better to give than to receive. Uh-uh, uh-uh, that's not what God says. That's not how he set up his universe. It's essential to give in order to receive. And the greater I am willing to receive, the greater my ability to give, and the more effectively at that. It is essential to give in order to receive and the greater I am willing to receive, that's why you've got to really nail this part. I am a high fourth level leader. I receive over $13,500 every week. That's a receiving. The, more, the greater I am willing to receive, the greater my ability to give. If you don't write this piece in here, you will negate this up here. You will negate your leaders and your, your customer base. You will limit them. To the extent that you limit your, your ability to receive, you will limit this up here. And what you're really wanting, what you're really wanting is expecting a lot from you. How great are you willing to be? How mm -hmm. great are you willing to show up every day? That identity has to be taken on first. That identity has to be taken on first. How great am I willing to show up? Not out of pride and ego. You know that these are God's principles. 
He's interwoven them into the fabric of the universe. That's why he gives commandments. The commandments are a very basic beginner course. This is going to ask way more of you than the commandments. The commandments were a temporal law. Like, you can handle this. Do this. Here's what you need to be commanded to do. Nobody's commanding you to do this. This is the higher law. The lower law was done away. The higher law has now been instituted. Christ established the higher law. Even to look on a person with lust is a sin. Not committing adultery. We're not talking about adultery anymore. We're talking about just looking at somebody the wrong way. That's the higher law. Why? Because it's asking you to discipline your mental faculties on a thought level. Oh, you could, you, all right, so I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. All right, make sense? Good shares, good share. All right, uh, anybody else want to share anything before we sure. I want to jump into some of the books. I'm here. Go ahead. Hey, just um, going back a little bit to the beginning of what you said, um, we're, you know, we're talking about, and we talked about this yesterday, uh, musicians and people who are in the creative arts, you could be throwing pottery, you could be doing music, um, you could be dancing. Uh, but in the terms of, of musicians, and a lot of us here on this call will relate to this, we, there are only so many chords out there available. There's only so many notes. There are an amazing amount of songs that use the exact same chords. And you would never guess it was the same chords. Because what's happened inside of those chords is the voicings are different, the tempos are different, the lyrics are different, the emotions are different, everything's different, all the complexities are different. But one, four, five, you know, if you ever hear that said, I mean, that's your classic, you know, music. And around one, four, five, which are different chords, and one, six, four, and so on and so forth, it's amazing how much emotion and feeling that creates and how creative the mind gets around these really simple, basic truths. So keeping that simple or creativity, creativity, you could be, you can try this at home. Try dancing with some music, just let yourself go and, and try all the different ways that you can express yourself through that. Or even petting the dog, the dog will love it. Pet the dog a million different ways. You know, there's just so many ways to express what we're doing. And, and another thing is, is when we show up in concert together, all of us, it, the expression is also magnified and also it's amplified. And so that when we show up, it could be the same song, but when four different musicians are playing that song, it's a totally different song, um, the way it feels. And it, it feels brand new. But I want to say something, uh, go back to you were talking about the concept of in my room, about going on in the room. talking in the background. Uh... Let's see if I, can, I can't find out who that is. Okay, go ahead. Sounds like this. Okay. So, so Dave, you talked in the very beginning. You say, hey, you know, we're talking about going in our rooms, just, you know, being quiet and going trips, going places in our rooms. The Beach Boys, listen to these lyrics by the Beach Boys. It's a song called In My Room. There's a world where I can go and tell my secrets too. And in my room, in my room, in this world, I lock out all my worries and fears in my room, in my room. Do my dreaming and my scheming, lie awake and pray. Do my crying and my sighing, laugh at yesterday. Now it's dark and I'm alone, but I won't be afraid in my room, in my room. That's a great uh, Beach Boys song. If you don't know it, go listen to it. It's beautiful. And uh, yeah, so you can, yes, you can be in the room with me too, Shelly. Um, but I, you know, it, it's in the solitude and it's in the quiet and it's in the, the times that we purposely isolate that that infinite untapped amazing creativity comes out and when we show up this morning we bring it and this is where it shows up and this is why it's important every morning to wake up with this group especially during these times and i just want to thank everybody on here for contributing to to my life and also to each others um, that's what we're doing is we're contributing and this group is, is un, unheralded. There's nothing else like it going on right now. It's bring people here. Yeah. Yeah, this, this group's open for anybody. They don't even have to be an Um 
there's a lot of, uh, not a lot. I, I've heard songs where I'm like, they know the law of attraction. Those, those lyrics that they just said explain it. Kind of like the Beach Boys song. He's telling you, you know, how he's being creative. They get it. Some of these guys really, really get it. It's not a, you know, we don't just have the niche in the corner of that market. There are people out there and you'll know that they get it by some of the things that people say. And I've heard something like Rush, you know, the, the group Rush. They totally get it, you know. Um, and that's why they behaved a certain way. Um, all right. Anybody else? Hi, I just, hi guys, it's Angela. I just had one uh, uh, thing that you mentioned, Dave, that it's just, it can't, it's not leaving my brain at all. I mean, all the things, but uh, you brought up that, you said revelation, and then you said the word revealing. And I thought you were talking about any truth is a revelation. Uh, speaking uh, is uh, it, the prophet, uh, revelation and revealing. And I've never, uh, I'm an editor. And I've never really thought about the fact that revelation and revealing are, are these related words. Um, it just never even crossed my mind until this morning, uh, you know, revealing and revelation. So I, I just wanted to just put those words out there because uh, I, I just found that uh, there's a lot, there's, a, there's such a deep level of uh, what you just said there. And I, I'm going to be pondering it all day. So that I don't even have any comments about it. I just wanted to bring up that, that I'm kind of mm -hmm. shocked that revelation and reeling are, revealing are um, the same word basically. I mean, from the same, wow. from the same root. Wow. Just you expanding on that, just that there's chills running through my body right now. Um, you know, and, and these principles are very revealing. They lead to these kind of ahas, this, this empowerment, this, the, and, you know, when you take all of this, so when we look at this, let's look at this template again, Charles Hanel in the master key system, which is a very in-depth book about many principles. Um, he says it's the law of love. The law of attraction is the law of love. So when you frame in, if you leave out some of the principles, like the, uh, uh, Neville Goddard has the science of getting, or the science of being great, right? It, or is it Wallace Waddles? What, uh, no, it's Wallace Waddles. The science of being great, right? So there's many principles. And if you leave some of them out, then this wouldn't be completed right. Like the science of being great is written into this, which I've read that book, The Science of Being Great. And so uh, the receiving part, if you left that part out, that's why many people are negating what they're writing out correctly up here. Yeah, you're adding value, but you're not receiving the value. And you'll only be able to receive up here in extent to what you're willing to receive yourself. So these principles um, really are revealing in themselves. That's why I want to learn as many principles or laws or commandments, however you want to frame that up. That's a negative connotation to some people. Commandments, not to me. I want to know as many commandments as I can. And so because it's going to empower me more when I understand them. And it's going to reveal to me, you know, greater revelations. So, okay. All right. So going back to, this is where in the book, he says, now that know that the money you need will come, even if it is necessary for a thousand men to be led to the discovery of new gold mines tomorrow. Look, I'm going to say this in a certain way, and some of you will know who I'm talking about, but there are people who were used to lead to the result that we were living in our template. There were people who were used in the process of leading to the exact person we desired to have on our team, and now the people that it used are no longer around, or very minimally around, or no longer around. In, in scenarios that I know that other people don't even have any clue of, those people are not even around anymore that led to the discovery of the person that you needed to partner up with, that I needed to partner up with, okay? It didn't, and, and, and those people are just the same as they were ever been that were used to get to that person that led to it, to make that connection. Their attitude, their perspective is just the same as it's always been. They weren't used in a way that they were, you know, used and then discarded. 
they were just a very helpful, they were a necessary tool. And I don't get upset because they're not around anymore. I get the principle because I read Wallace Waddles right here. Well, Wallace Waddles said they play a necessary part in the evolutionary yeah. process. That's but right. The same power which produced them will dispose of them. And it doesn't dispose of them in that I use you, ha ha, na 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 na. No, those people are the same as they were before. They were just a necessary instrument in making the connection for you. So don't get upset, hurt, or depressed, or start going in the wrong direction because that person isn't around anymore. You will negate even that which you want if you do. Just know that that's part of the process. I understand why on that, you know, you might want to take that class. If it keeps getting you upset as to why do people leave your organization and then you let that person leaving upset you and now even that which you had is going to be taken away because you didn't know why that person was an instrumental part in leading you to the next step. You negated the next step because you got depressed or you got upset or you got discouraged. You can't allow yourself in any circumstance to get discouraged. That's a powerful piece right there because many of you are gonna get caught in that trap where you get discouraged and now you take on that discouragement of that particular scenario playing out the way it had to play out in order to get you where you wanted to go, but it didn't get you to where you wanted to go because you created a pattern of continually getting discouraged when somebody doesn't play the role that you thought they were, should have played. Yeah, you need to take that class. Like, I know I'm going to need to take the class on how planets revolve around themselves. I'm gonna have to take the math class, <laughs> all right? So at some point, otherwise I'll be limited in my creative ability throughout eternity. So never look at the visible supply, look always at the limitless riches in formless substance and know that they are coming to you as fast as you can receive and use them. Nobody by cornering the visible supply can prevent you from getting what is yours. So never allow yourself to think for an instant. Ooh, that's asking a lot of you. That's asking a lot of me. So never allow yourself to think for an instant that all the best building spots will be taken before you get ready to build your house. So how do we trans translate that? Never allow yourself for an instant to be discouraged by a decision that somebody makes that's out of your control. You guard your focus with your life. You keep your mind at home. Those are things that I used to try to explain to people that were important based on these principles I was learning. Guard your focus with your life. Keep your mind at home. Don't worry about what other people do. So never allow yourself to think for an instant that all the best building spots will be taken before you get ready. I see many of you not guarding yourself. And for a lot of instances, you allow somebody else's decision to throw you off track. They throw you off track. Unless you hurry. Okay, so wait. So take it before you get ready to build your house. Unless you hurry. Never worry about the trust. You, you're going to learn patience. You're going to learn the gestation period. You're going to learn how to control your discipline if you're going to do this. You're going to learn how to discipline your disappointments. Jim Rohn, he didn't make that up out of, he understands the principles. You're going to either learn how to discipline your disappointments or you're going to continue to negate what you want, what you desire. Hi, Never can you it. hear me? Yeah. Hi, this is Carolyn. So what I just realized is all of my riches and wealth is waiting, but I, it was just waiting for me to be willing to receive all the gifts that are waiting for me. Yep. And the, and, and the trap is that as you go out and share, there's going to be people who say no, there's going to be people who let you down. All of that's by design. That's not like an uncontrollable part. It's just part of your past showing up. It's part of the fallibility of being a human being and attracting things like that still, even though we know. And it's just a matter of getting up, dusting yourself off 
and get your mind focused, get the feelings in harmony with what you have on your template. You have to keep dusting yourself off. I have to keep dusting myself off. I dust myself off less than I used to. And before, I didn't even dust myself off the right way before learning these principles. Did you hear that? I didn't even dust myself off and get up and move forward the right way. I dusted myself off, started getting up and moving forward again, and I was moving forward erroneously or incompletely because I didn't have all the principles. So I was moving forward erroneously. A lot of people dust themselves off and start moving forward again erroneously. Mm -hmm. What was that? Did you guys hear that? Yes. Oh, it must have been somebody else's phone. I'm looking, where's Siri? I didn't turn Siri on. I have so many devices. Maybe there's a device over in the other part of the office. I'm not seeing. It sounded like it was coming from my office. Um, does that make sense? So what you're hearing, Carolyn, is, um, yeah, the receiving part, but still make sure that you're hearing, you're going to discipline your disappointments. Now, unless you really know what that means, and we kind of talked about that in here, you know, but you're going to have to discover that and internalize it and make it a, a conscious part of your understanding that, Malcolm, can you read that piece again? Are you still there? That piece of where it is using, it was talking about the, the it was what we read last time, the tycoons that are going to use people. Well, it's going to use them. Where was that? Uh, Multi-millionaires like monster reptiles of the prehistoric eras. They play a necessary part in the evolutionary process, but the same power that produced them will it dispose of them. I mean, let's face it, uh, uh, Dave, where would Moses be without Pharaoh? Pharaoh played a necessary part. He was a plutocrat. He played a necessary part in, in the whole story. And, and without him, the story wouldn't exist. So, uh, uh, you know, when, when, when somebody says no to you, and, and, and the reality is, how, how many of us have, uh, you know, uh, uh, for four months, John Meyer was saying hell no to this, you know? He wasn't going to come to a meeting, you know, and, and, and it's, that's, that's part of the process. That's part of the evolution. You know, his, his mind had to be, you know, he had to, had to marinate in the pain until he, until he was ready to see what Dave MacArthur was talking about. You know, that was a necessary part of the process. So, thanks, can I? Um, Hey, let can me I add say, something in? Yeah, let me just uh, okay. let me just finish this that thought. So along this, so disciplining your disappointments, uh, there, there's different ways that you can negate. Are you starting to see that? There's different ways that you can negate different principles, and even the same principle in different ways. But uh, let's so let's say somebody shows up and you thought they were the one that was going to help you finish off your template, right? but they weren't, but what was being, they were being used to connect you to the person that you were, they were gonna, only they could connect you to in, 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 in that moment of time. And, but what happened is you stopped visiting your, your vision every day because they weren't doing what you thought they were going to do. So you stopped visiting your, your vision you stop connecting with it, you stop feeling it, you stopped experiencing it. And so that person that the quote unquote universe connected you to stopped being that instrument to connect you to the next person that was gonna connect you to the next person. You know, Willie was several generations away from the person that could have been the one that we could have thought was the one. And since they didn't produce, you get discouraged and you're like, this stuff doesn't work because that person is not doing it. So therefore, you stop the magnetic attraction in God's universe to get that person motivated to go out and con connect with the next person as that was convenient for them to do or at some 
moment when they finally got inspired or the timeline worked out that they connect with that person. You negated them from connecting with that person because you stopped doing your vision every morning because you thought they were the one, but they weren't doing it like you thought they should be doing it, but you negated it because you stopped connecting with your vision. Where if you had continued to connect with your vision every day, that person at some point in the gestation period would have connected with the next person that would have connected with the next person. It takes time, but you didn't give it the time. You stopped nurturing your vision. Just like when you stop nurturing a plant, it dies. So do you see how you can negate that receiving process? Because you didn't continue to do your part in the other areas that were demanded of you to do it. Does, it, does that make sense? Am I getting my point across? Jojo? Absolutely. to just add to that if if the thought is um on the moment of disappointment so somebody believes something happens whatever it is that it's something it's the thought is on that moment then you've missed the whole part of what is coming because you're stuck in the disappointment of something that's happening right now that's already been created we already chewed that gum that gum's been chewed that's happening today. That's already happened. It's already been created. It's what we're creating today that happens tomorrow that we can't even see yet. So it's that, that scenario of somebody leaving or the disappointment happening or something, somebody saying no, that's making a way to something that you can't even see yet. So if all you're doing is focusing on the present moment, then you've missed what's happening. This is already done. Don't bake that. If you don't like the recipe that's happening and you don't like the cake you're eating today, don't bake with that recipe again tomorrow. That cake's already been baked. <laughs> what Jojo's saying is so profound. It's, I never look at the moment. Yeah, I can enjoy the moment. There's aspects of the moment that I enjoy and I'm enjoying the journey. It's not always about I'm going to reach someday, but in the beginning, especially in the beginning, it was more about what's coming. But now that I've been able to create and recreate and recreate and go from one magnificent win to the next, I enjoy the moment and I make sure I remind myself to enjoy the moment rather than always having to, you know, get to a certain point before I'll be happy. However, that being said, you have to look beyond the moment. I constantly looked beyond the right now through my template. My template was what was my now, not the moment. My template had become my now, and the things that were happening in the moment were still in the vortex of what I was creating when I didn't know how to create. And there are other infallible things that come up within me that are gonna create things that I didn't want in that moment. But I, I'm constantly, when I'm going for the next magnificent win, I'm constantly looking beyond the moment. But I'm not looking beyond the mark in that I want to enjoy the journey as I'm going forward. So there will be a sense of enjoyment that will come to you. Remember to live in that enjoyment as you are having the wins. Angela's had wins already with building her team, but it's not the mark that she's really going for. So you can't get stuck in the reality of the moment because she wants to create a new reality that is bigger and better than the current moment. But what Jojo is saying is some people get stuck in that moment and let that now be their focus and what they're, they let their guard down on their template. You can't let your guard down on your template and hopefully your template's bigger than your current moments. And hopefully that's why people- So low. But that's why people get taken out of the game because they're focusing on the current disappointment. It's the always, 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 if you look at the thing that happened, that thing that knocked you off the wall, it's that thing that leads you to the better thing on the other side. Always. If you reverse engineer any situation, I don't care how bad it was, it will always go, you'll be able to see that that was a gift at some point that started something that took you somewhere better every single time, every time. And we forget that in that moment 
being disappointed and feeling down and, 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 and losing the focus on where we're going because it's that one moment of disappointment or sadness or, you know, we want it more for, than somebody wants it for themselves, whatever that is, we, um, we get stuck there. And that is the, that's the hugest reason why we see people get taken out of the game every single day. As a teacher and knowing that these things are true and what people have within them and the ability that they have to become everything they desire, that's the toughest thing is to see people get, keep getting stuck repetitiously, consistently in that moment. And then they start to, their world starts to evolve around that disappointment. Their life becomes that disappointment. I've seen it again and again. And I think that, you know, having this conversation around this, those people can start to recognize that self-betrayal for themselves and seeing how, yeah, I do let those moments that are essential. Obstacles are essential. And they're not really obstacles. They're opportunities. That person was going to lead you to the next person. Only, now make an asterisk right here, only if you've been living and, and being in harmony and being in integrity to your template. Only if you've been in integrity to your template, those obstacles, seemingly obstacles, are really opportunities. They're leading you to somebody else. But most people are not true to their template. They're not doing it every morning. So the discouragements that they're pulling up are there by design, by them. But if you're true to your template, every obstacle isn't an obstacle. It's an opportunity that leads you to the next bigger opportunity and win. That is so Dave, huge. That right Dave, there is worth the price of admission. Dave, can I say something really quick? So it looks yeah. like the topic we're on is also a chapter in the book. And just kind of to firm up what JoJo's saying is the law of gratitude is what shifts you out of this, these disappointments and the discipline. And also, like you're talking, what are the things we're thinking about? You know, I love to write it out. Like you always say, name it to tame it. And I just physically have a burden ceremony. And it is the most fulfilling experience, somehow moving into gratitude. And maybe at the time we aren't able to see the gratitude. I mean, Jesus said in all things, give thanks, right? Not just in some things, but all things. And so if we can't be grateful at the moment of what we are being disappointed on, you know, of course I write it out, burn it or whatever we do, journal it, name it to tame it. But if we start to be great, and I have found from my own personal life that as I start to be grateful for other things, then I can trust the hand of God in my life. I can see and pursue the faith I have in the things that I want and let, you know, the universe or God kind of move those pieces around and be more humble that the pieces that need to be in that puzzle are coming, that they are there. And so kind of, you know, I just wanted to reiterate the law of gratitude and that we don't have to right at the beginning, be grateful for the disappointment, but that will come to us if we keep our mindset in this vision of gratitude. Yeah, that's a great point, Cindy. I think I'm going to do that on Lenny's call, talk about the law of gratitude, because it is such an important law. That was a huge chapter for me. And the gratitude in that that obstacle is not going to prevent you from accomplishing your goal. See, what you're now going to be doing is you're framing up a philosophy that's going to govern and guide you as an individual, and that changes you as a person. When you start to take on a philosophy like that, and, and you hadn't before, people are going to be like, whoa, you've really changed. Because the conversations you're having are different. The way that you're conversing with people and what you're allowing and agreeing with are going to change. You are going to become a different person when you didn't govern yourself like that before. And now that's your guiding, governing philosophy. Do you see how that would change you as a person? And people would notice that, you would notice that, they would notice that. They wouldn't be able to put their finger on why you're having all these successes now. They're just gonna be like, wow, you've really changed. Some people won't even wanna hang out with you anymore because they're not willing to adopt that philosophy just yet. They're not ready yet. And it's not what you're going to get, it's the person you become in reaching your goals. That's what you get to take with you. That's we did an exercise. That you get to take with you. 
Do you, I don't know if you remember this, but a while, a long time ago, when we first started doing retreat, like a billion years ago with Lenny, we did an exercise where we found something in our life that was challenging, that had disrupted our life. And we, we moved that forward to see where it took us. Because you don't connect the dots standing where you're at now, but reverse engineering and going back to look at it, this that at that moment in time, had those steps not taken place in my life at that point, I never would have met you. I would never would have been at that expo. Like the, none of that would have happened. It, it couldn't have happened in any other way than how it happened like that. And so that really bad thing had to happen and disrupt my life in order to move me in the direction where I where was going to be my next life path. But in the moment, I couldn't see that. All I could see was the pain and the hurt and the anger and the money and the, all these things. But it, in the end, when if I could have just been grateful for knowing that whatever was happening right then was going to move me to my next space, maybe it would have happened a little quicker, right? But I, yeah. you, it's always being grateful for that crazy thing that happened um, because it's going to bring us to our next amazing thing. What a pearl of great price this morning. You know, uh, there's a lot of good stuff that came out here and uh, um, we'll put the, the, I'll get this up on YouTube um, and, and you'll have this to go back and listen to. Very much worth listening to. Um, with that, you guys, um, let's go out and rock this day, create that template, unlimited complexities. You, you make your own complexity. There's still an infinite amount left, just like the core progressions and the artists. Don't worry about taking something from somebody else, not on the creative plane. If it was competition, yeah, then you might want to worry and fret about offending God and, and, and self-sabotaging. But in the creative process, uh -uh, you're in alignment with God. Create your complexity. Be willing to be great and, uh, and, and get that fantasy into a theory. Get it written out and then fall in love with it every day and start turning it into a fact. Watch the miracles happen. All right, you guys, have an amazing day. And thank you so much for showing up this morning. My life has been blessed because you did. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.